Hello, this is Chris Neal from South Plains College with another installment of my how-to video series to supplement my courses. This video is on overdub and punching techniques. In this video, we'll look at a single track version of the playlist recording technique that we talked about in the last video, as well as some overdub punching techniques and talking about pre and post roll. As always, you will see my shortcuts displayed at the bottom of the screen when necessary. And here's a guide to the symbols that you'll see down there. Some of the useful shortcuts we'll have here, new playlist, pre-roll, on off, how to set the pre-roll using the selector tool and promoting a playlist to main playlist. Okay, in this video, we're gonna add some electric guitar to our tracks. So reviewing, here's our electric guitar channel. And we're going to set up a more me for that just to kind of review that um, scenario and how we set that up. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to go to the send for that track. So there we go. We click and we are going to say new track and we're going to create a mono aux input track and name it Q electric guitar. So there we go, mono aux input track, name Q electric guitar, create. There it is. Let's move it over here to the right with the other headphone auxes. Move it out of there, close the send. So mute, put that one at zero. Have them muted just for technical reasons. Assign the output to the next Q. Um, I'm not sure where that was an auto latch. Let's turn that back to read. And let's see for housekeeping, uh, probably should have the click maybe as the last um, or me in the Q system. So I'll put that at Q8. Um, doesn't really matter, but anyways, just organizational. Uh, set that to Unity. Make sure your sends are pre. All right, so the headphones are ready to go. The other ones are still set up from last time. So record enable that track. And remember, the first thing we need to do before we do anything in the playlist system is to create a new playlist on this track. So we will get our uh, sound check out of the way, and then we will create a new playlist, which we can do from here using the shortcut, or we can go back over to the edit window and do that. Either way, you can do it from either window, as you see here. Again, we can go over to the edit window and we can do that from the uh, playlist selector and choose new playlist there, but we've already done that. We see electric guitar has .01 already in its name, so when we record, that will be in the track uh, audio file named uh, that's created when we record. So again, we can go to the playlist selector and choose new track, or we can use the shortcut control backslash to create a new track. So we're about ready to record, so we're gonna record take one into this playlist, .01. Now remember, Pro Tools is a selection-based program. It records and plays what you have selected. And we will get into that in a minute when we start punching in on this track. For right now, we're just going to uh, hit return and record. And then we'll get into uh, when we want to punch in on a track. Uh, then the selection matters. So away we go. Okay, there's take number one. Beauty again of this system is how quickly you can be back with a new take and recording. So we can use our shortcut control backslash to get a new take named .02. We hit OK to accept that name and we're ready to roll. Let's go. Okay, there's take number two. Let's move on to take number three. Control backslash, hit OK. Take three, we're ready to go. Return, let's record. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, there's take number three. Ready to roll on take number four. We'll do control backslash, hit return, hit three to record. Away we go. Okay, there's take four. Okay, now we might want to go back through and listen to the takes. Let the guitar player pick which is his favorite, so forth. And we can do that easily. We went over that in the last video. Okay, so we're going to pretend like the guitar player says take one is his favorite take, but it needs a little bit of fixing. There's a few little bobbles that need to be fixed. So uh, let's uh, listen and find those bobbles, and then we'll look at a punching technique where we can punch in and fix just those little sections. Um, one drawback of this system is we're only recording what we have selected. So we don't have any um, crossfade time. So usually I will record a little bit more in front of it and a little bit after and I'll have the guitar player start playing the minute they hear themselves on playback and then it won't matter if I'm punching in a little bit early and then I'll go back in and fix the punch in and punch out points to the place where we actually wanted to punch in punch out. We're going to zoom in here. We'll select the area and for this demo I'm just going to select a, make a perfect selection of exactly where I want to punch in punch out. I got a little room there to put a little crossfade, but I'm just selecting the exact area I want to punch. Okay, so I've got my selection set up. Now the guitar player will not be able to just start playing right there without hearing where he is in the song. So I need to use something called pre and post roll, which allows Pro Tools to play a designated amount of time before the punch point, and post roll is amount of play that happens after the punch point. So it's going to play, it'll drop into record right where my selection is, and then it'll punch out of record and continue to play for the post roll. Okay, let's look at how we can uh, turn on and set pre and post roll. So from the transport window, command one, you can set that here. We can turn it on and we can set that to two, for example. Um, and then we see the pre roll flag up here in the timeline, that little yellow flag up there. If we turn pre roll off, it will uh, the yellow will go away. We'll still see the flag, but it won't. It will be white. Uh, we can grab and adjust it up there if we need to move it. Uh, so I grabbed it and pulled it towards the selection, which also turns it off. And I'm gonna show you another way that we can set the pre and post roll. So I have my selection here. I have a selector tool. Um, and I can be in the smart tool as well. So I can make a selection and then I can hold down option and click in front of the selection to turn on and set the pre-roll to that amount of time. So it's a very fast way to turn on and set pre-roll. So you see an option click and there the pre-roll flag turns on up in the timeline. This can also be used to turn off pre and post roll by option clicking just inside the selection. So I'm going to start over and show you just how quickly you can be ready to roll. So I'm going to make my selection the selector tool. I'm going to hold down option, click in front of where I want pre-roll to start, so that turns it on and sets it. And I'm going to option click after to set a certain amount of post-roll, and then I'm ready to hit record. So let's uh, punch in on this part. So let's uh, go into record, and here we go. <laughs> So we can see how Pro Tools played during the pre-roll, punched in at the selection, punched out, played through the post-roll, and then I did stop. So remember, this only records the area selected. So if I need more room uh, for crossfades, I need to record a little bit of extra room. Um, I will also sometimes record a little extra if I think a singer is going to come in a little early or hold the note a little longer, things like that. So we can also see how the name of this audio file gets named .01. So we want to say that this is associated with take number one. So since we're recording into that 01 playlist, it gets a name like that. Okay, so let's go through this process again. We'll find another punch we need down at bar 7. So we'll scroll down there and we'll do this, do another punch down at bar 7. Now pre-roll and post-roll are already set, so we don't need to reset them, but I'm going to just for demonstration purposes. So I make my selection. I option click in front of the selection for the amount of pre-roll I want, and then I can just hit record. <laughs> Okay, there we go. 
So again, we would want to go back through here and put crossfades in uh, to make sure we have nice clean edits. So let's look at another way of doing this, which is quick punch. Okay, so first let's turn off pre and post roll because we don't need that on command K or we can go to the options menu. Okay, so we'll use quick punch and there are several ways in which you can turn that on and off. So we can go to the record button, we can right click and choose quick punch. We can go to the options menu and turn on quick punch or my favorite, use the shortcut command shift P and that's what I'll use. So we can turn it on, turn it off, you see there. Okay, so let's uh, do a little punch here. So we just roll back and we're gonna start playback from wherever we want, uh, whatever's enough time for the guitar player to uh, know where they are. I usually will tell them again, start playing the minute you hear yourself on playback and then I'll punch you in when we need to punch you in. So I'm gonna punch in here right before bar nine. So let's roll back and let's play. <laughs> Okay, so I punched in and punched out using the three key on the number pad. So again, one of the nice things about quick punch is the minute you go into play, it's actually recording. So I punched in a little bit late. I really wanted to punch in right here where my selector tool is. So I can fix that because again, it was recording the whole time. It just showed me that it was recording where I actually punched in. So see if I drag this out, well, there's my punch point I really wanted. But again, it was recording the whole time. As you can see here, as I dragged that audio file out, it was recording that whole time. So that's a great thing about it. Uh, and it's also one of the drawbacks uh, that you're creating audio files that are much larger than you really need uh, at times. So use it when you need it. Uh, but that is also maybe a reason why you don't. So fix up my edit points there and then moving on. So let's uh, go over to another take. Let's go over to take two. And let's just say we wanted to make those same edits, but we wanted to make them um, at the same time using quick punch. So um, we wanted to grab uh, that bar two and that bar seven punch. And uh, we could do that all in one take uh, with quick punch. So we start playback. <laughs> All right, so I use the three key again to drop in and out of record. So I can go back and fix some of these points. Again, it was recording the whole time. So I can just zoom in and uh, and use the, the trimmer tool to uh, adjust where the punch in and punch out points. And I should again crossfade. So I punched in a little late here so I can drag that back to the proper punch point. Punched out a little late so I can fix that. And again, should put in crossfades to fix those edits and uh, punched out a little late there so I can fix all of those edits. So again, Pro Tools is recording the whole time, so it's very flexible. So that's, a, again, a benefit and a drawback. So one more thing we need to do is we need to copy the take that uh, the guitar player wants to use into the playlist that doesn't have a number in its name. So we go to take one, maybe that's the one that we want to use as the final take. We select the playlist that does not have a number in it. We are going to go into Playlist View. We will then triple click on the track that has the playlist that we want. So that's take one here. And we will use the upward arrow or Control Option V to promote that take to the playlist and then exit out of Playlist View. <laughs> 